Well, a very pleasant good evening to everyone and welcome to your Friday night just got better. Uh, and what a perfect night with a backdrop of game four, the Stanley Cup finals uh, just ahead of us from Edmonton between the Dallas Stars and the Tampa Bay Lightning, of course. I'm Dave Fisher. My pleasure to host uh, our session tonight here live from uh, USA Hockey headquarters in Colorado Springs. And uh, what a fun time we have with four U.S. hockey stars joining us here just momentarily. We'll have a chance during tonight's session to uh, take your questions for the players. So if uh, you're watching, the way to uh, get in on the uh, action is to email your questions to questions, Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N-S, questions at usahockey.org. And uh, in the body of your email, please make sure you include your name, your full mailing address, uh, your question and who your question is for. And the reason we need your mailing address is because if we do use your question, it's going to be pretty cool. You're going to get a piece of autograph swag from uh, one of our players uh, that will arrive in your mailbox here later this fall. So should be a great night. We thank Chipotle for bringing us all together tonight. And uh, now it's my great pleasure to bring in uh, our four athletes. Uh, and I want to introduce first uh, the current captain of the U.S. Women's National Team. And she helped uh, Team USA to a scintillating win in the 2018 Olympic Winter Games. I'm sure you were all turned in, uh, tuned in uh, just a couple of years ago. Kendall Coyne and Kendall, great to have you here. Thanks for being here tonight. Next up, uh, my pleasure to bring in uh, someone who was the eighth American to be the number one pick in the NHL draft and certainly the most recent, just a little over a year ago. New Jersey took him at the uh, top of the NHL draft. He just finished his rookie season with the Devils here a couple months back. Great to have with us, Jack Hughes. Jack, welcome. Uh, next up, uh, three-time Olympian. And uh, like Kendall, she was part of the journey to help our country win gold in Pyeongchang. She's been part of the U.S. Women's National Team program since 2006. Great to have with us tonight, Hillary Knight. Hillary, uh, welcome to you. And uh, also great to have with us someone that not too long ago, just uh, last month, was in the bubble in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, one of the emerging stars on defense in the National Hockey League from the Boston Bruins. Uh, we welcome in tonight, Charlie McAvoy. Charlie, great to have you as well. Well, thanks to, uh, thanks to all of you for uh, being here. And again, if you're just joining us and you have questions for our athletes, uh, again, the email address is questions at usahockey.org. And we need your name, your full mailing, or your full mailing address, the question and who the question is for. And we'll get to your questions tonight. With a backdrop of the uh, Stanley Cup finals uh, tonight, game four, I thought we'd start just by asking each of the four of you, when the playoffs started uh, two and a half months ago, whatever it was, who did you think would win? And then when, once we got down to these final two teams before the series started, who did you think would win? And uh, Hillary, why don't, we, why don't we start with you on that one? Well, that's a tough question. Um, you know, I was, I was kind of rooting for the Caps, but, um, you know, just because of, of Toronto's season uh, finish last year, but they're an incredible team. Sorry, not Toronto, Tampa. Tampa's an incredible team, and it's really fun to see how they kind of put together this season at the end of it. And, um, you know, obviously they're, they're crushing it right now. Who'd you root for growing up? Uh, oh, boy. Uh, the Chicago Blackhawks or the Detroit Red Wings? Yeah, nice, awesome. Yeah. Jack, what about you? Who'd you think was going to win at the start? And then once we got to under these final two teams? Um, I mean, I didn't really pick anyone off the start. Um, it was just too hard to tell teams that were rolling. I mean, their season ended, paused. So I think it was tougher for, for the older teams probably to jump right back into it. But um, right now I like Tampa. I mean, I just really like the way they play, all the skilled players they have. And uh, I think it'd be really fun to see a, a team like that win. Awesome. Uh, how about you, Kendall? What, what were you thinking? Yeah, I think with the, the format, I think it was so unknown, like Jack said, with the pause, uh, I think it was really up in the air, but uh, I had Colorado coming into it. Um, I thought, you know, they were, they were hot before they were hot after, but obviously didn't work out, but have Tampa now. Tampa now. All right. Tampa seems to be the pick. 
Charlie Mack, a little, little different. I, I, we probably can skip the first question because you were in the playoffs. So I, you probably thought you were going to win starting off. I don't know about these, got, got out of the la- these last two teams. Who'd you think was going to win? Uh, well, yeah, kind of touching on that. Obviously we, we had a really good year and we were confident in our group. So um thought we were going to go and, and, and have a good, uh, good run at it, but we, we ran into a good team and that Tampa team is uh, playing really well right now. Um, I do have a college teammate on, uh, on Dallas, so uh, pulling for him and Jake Ottinger. Yeah, good to see him getting a lot, in a little action here the other night, right? Uh, we got to ask about the bubble, I guess, right? I mean, you were in the bubble. Uh, I'm sure people are wondering what what was it like. I, I mean, the, the bubble was great. I I actually really enjoyed my time there, and um, you know, obviously you're you're on the uh, the playoff schedule, so you're you know you're practicing and playing every other day, and you know, staying really focused and. Uh, you know, most of your time you're spending just trying to recover and, and make sure you're ready to go for the next game. So uh, in that regard, it, it was really good. And, and the setup was great. The NHL did a, did a really good job. And uh, as far as like extra extracurricular stuff, they, uh, they had that BMO field for us, which was really neat. Uh, a lot of teams kind of gravitated over there and um, that was awesome. They kind of had, they had racquetball, tennis, ping pong, like everything like that. That hotel X was, was really nice. So it was good. We had a great time and, you know, wish could have been in the bubble a little while longer, but um, overall it was a great experience. Awesome. And I'm sure we're all ready to get past the bubble part of life, right? Get back to whatever sense of normalcy we, we were used to. Um, but we're really excited at USA. I could have Chipotle as a, uh, as a partner. And it, it just seems like Chipotle and hockey go hand in hand. Anytime you mention, it seems like people can't get out the door fast enough to get to the restaurant or, get on the mobile app if you're in that environment and order. And um, I, I'm just kind of curious. I know what my go-to order is, but I, I know the people out there want to hear what you guys have to say on that. And what do you, what is your go-to order at Chipotle? And I, do any of you remember kind of your first ever visit to a Chipotle? I don't know. Uh, Jack, what do you got? Um, I don't know if like, I don't think Chipotle is something sentimental or right remember my first Chipotle bowl so no on that but um yeah probably with friends I used to go there like three four times a week last year and the year before and then this year obviously living alone and not cooking I was pretty much going there every day um so I was mixing it up a lot but I mean I could always rely on Chipotle for a for a good meal what's your what's your go-to though if you had one like what is one thing that you're going to go to what what's your order uh probably steak rice beans corn and a little lettuce and then i like will refuse to eat the chipotle without a vinaigrette so that's like the most important thing in the bowl that's a bowl though no no burrito right yeah no it's a bowl okay bowl what about you kendall well i actually have my go-to order Part of it. I've already eaten half of it. Couldn't <laughs> wait. Um, but definitely a bowl. This is the second time I've had Chipotle this week. So I, I definitely had a lot, have it a lot. I was in Minnesota last week with the PWHPA. Uh, and after our game, we, we stopped at Chipotle and I got a burrito. So my go-to is a bowl. But after a game, when I'm famished, I go for the burrito. Yeah. Um, and it's usually gone within a few minutes. <laughs> but uh, the bowl is my go-to. I have chicken. Uh, I like white rice. Um and then mild sauce, sour cream, cheese, guac, lettuce. So pretty hearty, but uh, delicious. And then chips and guac have to come with too. Ooh. And now, so that's the thing. I, I mean, people out there are watching. You guys are all elite level athletes and you have to watch your diets. But chips, is, is chips okay? Is that regular or is that like a splurge or? I mean, fish, we're burning so many calories every day. Okay. I wouldn't call the guac is good for you. It's a lot of healthy fats. Chips are fine. Yeah. It, yeah, it's definitely fine. And then the, the bowl, it just has everything you need, whether it's, you know, proteins, carbs, fiber with everything. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a win-win. Awesome. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> I learned something new already. Uh, Hillary, what, what about you? Um, yeah, I used to go like every other day. Um, <laughs> but I, was in Idaho for a bit and was about like two and a half hours away from a Chipotle. So that was kind of tough for quarantine, but um, now I'm back on the wagon. Um, I usually get a veggie burrito and just like the, 
I don't do the fajitas all the time, the veggies, um, but I love substituting the black beans or the pinto beans. And then recently I'm uh, just doing the bowl. So I'm, yeah, just switching it up a little bit, but to echo uh, Kendall's statement about chips, like those are a must have, so. Ooh, they are, aren't they? Oh, they're good. What about uh, Charlie, what's your go-to? What's your go-to order? Uh, I do a bowl. Bowl? With uh, white rice, black beans, chicken, uh, lettuce, cheese, mild, and guac. Yeah. Chips and guac, obviously, of course. Chips oh. are a must. Oh, I'm liking the chip stuff. I, 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 I'm not <laughs> sure I expected that answer from you guys, but. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> way, to, way to rub it in, Kendall, by digging into it. Jeez. I, uh, I, or every, every, I get a burrito every time and I put, I ask for every single kind of salsa and the, they always look at me like I have two heads. You want them all? And I said, yeah. And I tried the brisket the last time I was in there last week. It was pretty good actually, but normally I do chicken, but it's good stuff. I, I, let's get back to a little hockey. I want to, I want to ask you guys uh, kind of an off the, a little off the beaten path about Jersey numbers. And I don't know how many different Jersey numbers you guys have uh, worn a, along the way in your career, but Maybe share with, share with us all your jersey number uh, story and what numbers you've worn and any stories behind the numbers. And before we uh, get into that, I want to just remind those of you watching that if you have questions for our athletes, we're going to get into those here after this. So email your questions to uh, questions at usahockey.org. And again, a reminder, put your name, full mailing address, your question and who your question is for in the body of the email. And uh, if we use your question, you'll get a uh, nice signed piece of swag from one of our athletes in the mail here later this fall. So on the, on the number front, um, Hillary, why don't we, why, why don't we start with you on that one? Oh boy. Um, well, I always want to be a goalie. So I tried to start out with number one and then was told that I would never make it. So uh, <laughs> graduated to, I think I was born 18. Um, my first number with the U S team was 16. Um, and then college, I was number 23 and um, number 21 as soon as I could. And it was such an honor to be able to wear that number just because of Cami Granato and growing up in Chicago and her just being like the biggest icon and legendary um amazing role model for you know women obviously in hockey but then also in other sports and fields as well so really cool to be able to continue to wear that number pretty cool she's uh on the seattle staff now too i bet huh right yeah yeah they're gonna yeah they're gonna be awesome you you like the you like the name kraken yeah I, I, I like the logo a lot yeah. it's pretty yeah. fresh so Turned out pretty cool. Did you, did you, you guys, what do you guys, the rest of you guys think of the, the Kraken logo and Mark? Have you seen it? I imagine you've seen it, of course. No comments. All right. Well, we'll get, we'll get around to that when we get the Jersey story. Jeez. I mean, fish, they play for other teams, right? Well, they can still like the logo. That's a good point. That's tough. That's yeah. tough. Yeah. Here that we are, you know, That's... cheering for other teams and Charlie's in the bubble. We should have said the Bruins from the get go, but. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's for sure fair. What what about uh, Husey? What about your what your number story along your career and uh, what numbers you've worn and special stories behind why you have what numbers? Um, eighty six, I guess six was uh, with Green, the captain. Um, forty three was with Sini, who played I think sixty games the year before, and then eighty six. I don't know. I just thought it was a cool number, so I said, why not? Um, I don't know. I wanted to be a, a high number too. I think those are better than the, the single digit numbers. So I don't know. That's just something I chose. So is that 86? Is that something that, you know, you think you'll be sticking with forever? Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of changing the Jersey number like into your career. So I'd say, uh, yeah, I'm 86 for good. 86 for good. All right. Kendall, I mean, between chips and guac, what about the uh, what about the Jersey journey in your career? Numbers. I've had number quite one. a few. Yeah, I've had quite a few numbers. As a kid, I was always number seven for Chris Chelios, the Chris Chelios who obviously played in Chicago. Um, not not never twenty four, could never do it. Uh, always seven. <laughs> um, and then when I went to college, I was number seventy seven in memory of my friend and teammate with the, with the U.S. under eighteen team, Elizabeth Turgeon. 
Um, she wore 77, passed away in 2010. So I wore that in, in her honor. Um, and then when I joined the U.S. team, I, I, te- I was actually number two a lot. And I think it was because it was the smallest jersey. Um, and then when I joined the senior team, I was given 26 and fell in love with it. And, you know, it, it doesn't really, you know, you're just given the number and happy to be on the team. So it's grown on me. And, you know, there's a lot of smaller players who wear number 26, of course, Martin St. Louis. So uh, it's fitting. Um, even if he's not American, that's OK. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so that's how I got 26. Awesome. All right. What about, uh, what about you, Charlie? What's a, what's a yeah. journey number journey? Like, uh, I had a couple different ones. It was kind of just like whatever what kind of phase, I guess I was going through. So when I was really young, my dad, um, he wore number 24 in men's league. So him being my hero, I was like, I'm going to wear number 24, like my dad. And, uh, I did that in youth hockey. And then I kind of went through a phase where, uh, where Darren McCarty, on the Red Wings, he was my favorite player. So I switched to number 25 and that went all the way. It was my favorite number. And then one year, um, my last year, youth hockey, there was a kid who had 25 on the team already. And I switched over to 74 uh, for TJ Oshie and John Carlson at that point, they weren't on the same team. And um, they were my favorite players at the time. And I thought the number was cool. And then from there, uh, college was number seven. I didn't have any anything really attached to that it was just kind of what was available and I thought that number would be neat and and then kind of same thing with 73 it was the playoffs so in training camp everybody picks their number all all 45 50 guys at camp get to pick a number so there was a straggler and uh, I just kind of looked at it and I wore seven in college and kind of got attached to that so there was a seven in there and uh, just thought it looked Look pretty neat, so I went with it, and now I'm stuck with it. <laughs> no, I'm stuck with it. So, so it might I like not it be... though. It's grown on me a lot. It has. So, so there could be a yeah. chance for a change. No, 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 no. Well, 25 is my favorite number, but we got Brandon Carlo, who he's a heck of a defenseman, and he's not going anywhere. So, all right, all right. Well, that's you awesome. Got it. Yeah. Good stuff, you guys. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, we're going to get into some of the questions from uh, the audience tonight. Uh, we have a lot of them queued up. We'll try and get to as many as we can. And again, uh, if you have questions, email, email them to uh, questions at usahockey.org. Be sure to include your name, your full mailing address, the question uh, you have and who it's for. And then if we use your question, you'll get a piece of signed swag from one of our athletes in the mail. You won't know what the swag is. You don't won't know who's signing it. So it'll be, It'll be a great surprise coming here later this fall. And our first uh, question, I think this can be for all of you. Um, it's from uh, Knox Smith, who's from a squirt team in Niles, Illinois. And uh, Niles says, I'm happy to be playing again, but the thing I really miss during COVID is the time in the locker room with my team. Any funny locker room stories you can share? Uh, and again, this is a family audience that we're... Uh, involved with tonight so um we'll keep that in mind but i i don't know who uh, who wants to start with that i mean i'm sure you guys have all got some fun locker room stories from times over the years anybody want to want to get us going i know you're all pondering right now thinking what can i share here what am i going to share somebody somebody's got a i had one yeah i had i had one that i uh that i shared last time but it's a good one so um well obviously for for the question I think the time in the locker room is some of the most fun time that you're able to have with your teammates and uh you know I hope uh you're able to get that back now uh that you're playing again but mine was uh I showed up and this is my rookie year and um guys on the team like to have fun sometimes with uh with the younger guys so uh I can't even really remember why but I'm sure I did something and deserved it but uh Marshy took my suit pants and we have a sewing machine where our equipment guys are, are able to put the jerseys and stuff back together. And he took the bottom of my suit pants and sewed them together. So uh, after I, I got showered, I was getting ready to get on the bus pregame uh, after pregame skate and went to go put my feet in and just fell right over. Uh, figured out that they were sewed together. I ended up missing the bus because I couldn't figure out how to, how to fix my pants in time, how to take a lonely Uber back to the hotel. Oh goodness! Yeah, 
That's a good story. Kendall, you got something. Yeah, I would say what I miss from when I was a kid was we used to play shinny or some people call it mini sticks, but I think in Chicago, we call it shinny. Uh, we play shinny, you know, push the bags underneath and get a little game of shinny going before our real game. I think those sometimes were more fun than the actual hockey game. Yeah, yeah, it's great to have hockey back, certainly, and great to see our youth players back uh, in various fashions across the country playing the game. Well, Hillary, what any any stories come to mind, locker room or other, that uh, – you can share with uh, young kids out there? Um, nothing in particular. I just, I think, uh, you know, it's, as Charlie said and Kendall said, it's just, you know, those are the moments you kind of cherish and they're a lot of fun and you just pal around with your, your some of your best friends and create memories and share jokes and different stories and stuff. Um, yeah, nothing, I mean, nothing too crazy. I think Shinny was something that we did obviously in Chicago, but um, yeah, nothing really that stands out top of mind. I just, I'm happy hockey's back and, and hopefully uh, everyone gets to get back to normal when things get under control. Jack, Jack, what, what do you, excuse me, what do you have for us? Yeah, I mean, I have like plenty of stories like kind of swirling in my head, but yeah, um, obviously not the time or place, but I think that uh, I've played with a lot of funny teammates over the years. I mean, even last year, um, we didn't have a great team by any means, but we had fun locker room, funny guys that uh, like to hold court in the room a little bit and 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 kind of have some pranks and jokes. But um, yeah, I don't think there's anything that I'm sure these three have some pretty funny stories too, but just not the time. Knox, it's a, Knox. Thanks for the question. A great question, and you know, you hear from just like you said, Knox, and I'm sure everybody listening that plays the game. Some of the best times and memories are just with your teammates in the locker room, on buses, hanging out, whatever it might be on the ice, of course. So uh, that was a great question, and and thank you guys for sharing. We got some more questions here too, and this one is from Grace and Grace in Buffalo. And Grace, I'm not going to attempt your last name. I apologize because I might butcher it. But the question is for Jack Hughes, and uh, the question is this: What inspired, motivated you to play hockey? Um. I wouldn't say it was one thing. I think I kind of just uh, grew up and it was almost put upon me and my brothers. I mean, that's just my parents kind of just said that's what we do. We play hockey in this family. Your cousins do it. Um, we did it. And that's what you guys are going to do until you're 10 years old. And if you don't like it, then you, you don't have to play anymore. But um, yeah, I mean, once we started playing, we fell in love with it, obviously. And uh made great friends out of it and obviously have become successful um, because of it. So, I mean, I think that uh, for me, it wasn't a certain thing that inspired me. Um, it was more of just growing my passion throughout the years. And of course, uh, for those of you watching that don't know, it truly is a hockey family. Uh, Jack's dad is the captain of the Providence uh, men's ice hockey team. His mom Started on the women's national team, 92, I think it was. She helped our country to a, a silver medal. And, of course, his brother Quinn plays in Vancouver for the Canucks. And the younger brother, Luke, coming up, will be in the NHL draft here in a, a year or so, right? And uh, who, who wins the battle between the three brothers, Jack? At what? It depends at what. Ooh, okay. Um, well, let's just go with hockey. I don't know, man. I <laughs> I know that when I skated with Luke this summer, he wasn't taking the puck off my stick, but. Oh, um, there we go. <laughs> it's crazy though. It's, it depends on the stuff we do. Yeah. Um, golf, Luke usually isn't in the mix. Um, ping pong. We haven't played much ping pong recently, but it depends. And it's, it's pretty fun around here. Your mom in the mix or your dad? No, we keep him out of it. You keep him out of it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing. And uh, our next question is from Dan um, in Arizona. And this is for Hillary. And Dan asks Hillary, my sons are in 10U and 6U hockey. I'm a 6U coach. What advice do you have for them? And then at the end of it, he says, on Wisconsin with an exclamation point. <laughs> it's great. Out of way, go Badgers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I think um, obviously – you know, we all sign up to play hockey because it's fun and to, to keep it fun and light. But, um, you know, I'm 
when I look back and, and, and I'm sure other players would say the same, it's just, it's so important to have a coach that, um, you know, makes you excited or gets you excited about going to the rink and, you know, putting in hard work and, uh, you know, not necessarily disguising the hard work as fun, but definitely covering the fundamentals to make sure that, you know, you know how to skate and handle a puck and, and all the spaces and stuff. But um, at the end of the day, like creating an environment where everyone wants to come in and compete and work hard. Awesome. Good advice for sure. Um, and thanks for Dan for your question. Appreciate that. Um, we covered this before and Terry, maybe you didn't hear this. So I'm, I'm going to ask this question again, because I'm sure we've had some people tuning in since we've got started and others will be interested, but Terry from uh, Monument, Colorado asked Charlie McAvoy, what was it like playing in the bubble and playing with no fans? That had to be, that had to be an adjustment. Yeah. Um, no, uh, yeah. Like I had said earlier, playing in the bubble was, was uh, a great experience and, um, you know, I guess try and add a bit of a different answer, but I guess it was unique. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time together, you know, you spend a lot of time together just without the bubble, um, you know, commonly doing stuff, but, uh, we went to dinner together every single night and we had team movie, days and stuff like that so just kind of spending even more time together was was awesome and you know you're going through that experience together and no one's gone through that kind of being in a bubble and just playing hockey and a lot of guys have you know wives and kids and stuff like that so kind of just um looking to each other to to keep positivity and, and energy and kind of go through everything together so um yeah that was neat uh playing without fans was definitely different um i think it was really hard uh you know, at times to find your own energy, you know, being down in games, it's really when the leaders had to, to step up and maybe over compensate for, uh, for lack of energy. And, um, but in a different mindset, I think it, it kind of makes the playing field completely level, you know, whether you're the home team or the away team, obviously, I mean, you have the, the last line change, um, but without any fans in the stands, it's, it's hard for momentum uh, to really, be a big, uh, you know, big issue or traveling and, and kind of having those flight legs and then trying to find it the next day or anything like that. So um, it was definitely unique and, and a lot different from the, the playoff side experience before. What, what was it like with that piped in fan noise? Uh, <laughs> I mean, could that you hear it? To... That was only for the TV fishy. Okay. So you didn't hear it. The, you didn't hear it as a player. No, it was completely quiet in the uh, in the rink. Yeah, I think they were just using that for TV. Gotcha. Okay. We cool. had the music in between whistles, and and uh, during play, it was dead silent. It was whatever was going on on the ice. All right. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Thanks uh, for sharing that, Charlie, and and uh, Terry. Thanks for your question. Appreciate that. We have a, a question from uh, Brett for uh, Kendall and Hillary, and it is uh, which skill. Do you think female players wanting to make the jump from U17 up the ladder uh, further should focus on which skill those U17 players, you know, moving up should focus on? Kendall, why don't we start with you on that? Well, I think what's carried me through uh, my development is obviously my speed. Um, I think that's an important part of the game, but I think as, as you get older and what I learned as I got older, it's not just about being fast. It's how are you using your speed effectively, whether it's not just going north to south, but east to west, the change of the direction, the change of speed and, you know, how to push defenders back, how to create space and use the speed, use your speed more effectively. So um, that's definitely a skill that has, that has helped me. And I would encourage uh, players to work on as well. Yeah, that speed we got to witness uh, in the NHL All-Star competition firsthand. And, uh, I'm sure probably everybody on here watched that, but you still think back about that and recollect about uh, that experience? Yeah, it was an incredible experience. And, I mean, it, it's crazy to think, you know, what ha what would have happened if Nathan McKinnon didn't get hurt? And thankfully it was a minor injury and, and he returned to play shortly after the All-Star weekend. But a lot of credit is due to the NHL, the NHLPA, the players who were in the competition because ultimately uh, you know, they had to say yes to that moment with him getting hurt and me being there and, and me stepping up to the plate and, and being able to actually compete alongside the men's. But uh, so it was, it was a short, it was short notice, but I think at the end of the day as athletes we're we're prepared for things like that, whether, 
you know, we know it or not, uh, but it was an incredible moment. One that really uh, helped transcend the game, especially the, the girls and women's game. I think people really recognize that, you know, the talent that the game possesses, um, you know, with, with being able to witness that. And I, I have to say too, I don't, I, I know it wasn't as uh, big of news because Brianna Decker didn't compete, but uh, she did officially take second in the premier passing, uh, which was pretty cool. Um, it was unofficial, but again, just shows the talent um, that it continues, that continues to increase in the women's game. Awesome. Yeah. That was a fun moment for sure. Something we'll never forget. Hillary, what about uh, skill? What, what, what do we, what do you say on that front here? Remember back to when you were that age or, and now that you have all the experience you have, uh, what would you, what kind of advice would you give? I don't know. I don't know if it's just one skill, obviously different players have different strengths and um, that's yeah. what makes, you know, the team strong is just that collective um, strength together. But um, yeah, I, I think it's just identifying that and continuing to hone those things, but also work on the weaknesses to, to help you, you know, bridge the gap. But it, uh, I think Kendall, Kendall touched on it. It's just making sure that, you know, as you get older, the game kind of slows down because there's more memory with it. Um, but understanding you know how to how to read the space and and to really um, utilize your skill set amongst other amazing players um, and you know I think the the other thing that's not talked about is just being a great teammate um, and a good citizen to what you guys are trying to accomplish and that actually goes a really long way for sure yeah great advice from both of you and I uh, really appreciate the question Brett thanks for checking in if you're uh, jo just joining us too and you have questions for the uh, players, you can email them to us at questions at usahockey.org. And again, we need your name, your full mailing address, uh, your question and who your question is to. Uh, when you send that in, and our next question is from Laura in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. This question is for Jack Hughes, and it is, what advice do you have for young hockey players looking up to you? Um. I think for young kids, I think the most important thing is just to go to the rink and have fun. I mean, um, I know when I was young, it wasn't really about, oh, I got to I gotta play in the NHL. I got to work hard today and do that. It was more of uh, just my passion and wanting to have fun on the rink and, uh, and just enjoying it. I mean, that's the most important thing. I mean, at the end of the day, it is a game. Um, obviously, we're all we're all consumed by it and it's our lifestyle, but it is a game and uh, we're, it's, it's meant to be meant to be fun and, and you're supposed to have fun playing it. So, I mean, um, especially when you're young, don't, don't take it crazy serious, but uh, it, just enjoy it and, and love getting on the ice every time you get on the rink. Those three letters are awesome advice. F U N fun. Right. And uh, I think all of you have said that all the time and, something that uh, we tell association leaders at USA Hockey, and I think our sport does a pretty good job at it. Uh, Dallas, of course, I'm sure you're all uh, following along, has taken the lead in the uh, first period over Tampa Bay, one nothing. as uh, your Friday night just got better rolls on here with our four athletes. Um, our next uh, question, this one is for Charlie, and it comes from Megan from uh, Wolcott, Connecticut. Charlie, how does it feel to be on a D pair with big Z so often? Um, no, playing, playing with Z has been one of the best things I've, I mean, uh, I've ever done. Like he's just meant so much to me uh, on the ice and off the ice. Um, being able to learn from a guy who, you know, he's a first ballot hall of famer. He's accomplished everything that you could accomplish. Uh, uh, I mean, just, it's really just been so valuable for me um and off the ice he's just an incredible guy the way that he carries himself and the way he works it's uh it's you know he's become someone who i've tried to emulate and and just tried to be more like and um everything he's done for me i'm very thankful big z indeed he is a big man how long is he going to keep going do you think charlie as long as he wants fish <laughs> all right that's a great answer well, appreciate everybody joining us here tonight too. And again, uh, keep sending in your questions. I want to just ask each of you that, you know, this pandemic, we've all been sorting our way through together. A um, couple things on the pandemic. Um, what have you done that's new in your life? Have you, have you taken up a new hobby or anything during this time? 
And I'm also wondering, um, are you using the Chipotle mobile app more versus going into the restaurant and just restaurants in general? What is, have you changed your kind of behavior on that uh, during this time of pandemic? And I don't know, it's been interesting. I, I don't know, Kendall, what, what's, what do you have to say on that front? Uh, something new. Can I bring in a guest? I can show yes. you what I've been doing. Okay, if you guys give me one second here. Oh, I like this special guest tonight. We're, we always welcome special guests. I don't know what the special. Oh, okay. oh. awesome. This is what I've been doing during the pandemic. <laughs> we got a puppy that's definitely eyeing the guacamole right now. <laughs> this is Blue. Hi, Blue. My husband went to Michigan, so that's where her namesake comes from. Go Blue. Um, and I've, I definitely used the mobile app a few times during the pandemic, but once we were able to go in person and pick it up, I, I started to go and pick it up. No, they're doing it in person. Yeah. Well, thanks for bringing blue. That's what kind of dog is that? It's cute. It's a Bernadoodle. So she's uh 20 weeks and 40 pounds. So she's gonna oh. be a big girl. Awesome. All right. Um, Jack, what about you? What do you, what do you got for something new during the pandemic? Um, I've been fishing a lot during, uh, during the, like when it was really bad, I was going fishing a lot. Um, I mean, it was just nice being in like a high rise apartment all year, being in the city and then coming back here and there's actually trees everywhere and golf courses. So it was nice. And, uh, yeah, fishing something I did a lot. What, what kind of fish you catching? Just bass. We went to uh, a friend's pond and it was, it was pretty fun. Cause you're like pulling a fish out of the water every 10 minutes. So yeah, it's not, it's not crazy where you're, uh, you're, you gotta be really patient. And are you keeping them and filleting them up and eating them? No, or are you no they're not big enough to do that. Not big enough. All right. What, what about how, are you, are you a mobile app user or are you going to the Chipotle stores? Like for to to order. order my food? Yeah. Uh, it depends. I don't know. Some, some of the times I use the, the app. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, fishing. We got a dog, Hillary. Uh, anything new during the pandemic? Um, I mean, interestingly enough, I uh, participate in the Chipotle Challenger Series for COD. So I was okay. uh, playing a lot, you know, when it was really bad at the beginning uh, with my brothers and stuff, just because they weren't around. And it's a good way to just, you know, hang out virtually, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then I got into camping a little bit more, got out in the mountains of Idaho. Um, awesome. And yeah, I, uh, in terms of the app, I love using the app because I hate waiting. I'm just not a patient person. So I just go in and grab my meal and, and get on with the day, but yeah. Cool, camping, love that. Uh, and Charlie, what, what's, uh... What was happening during the pandemic new in your life? Um, I actually got a dog. Uh, I got a dog as well. I got a French bulldog. Um, we named him Otto after Otto Rocket from Rocket Power. And uh, he's awesome. He's about four months now. But when we got him, I left, I think, I think it was like a week and a half after. So I missed about five weeks. And when I came back, he was definitely bigger. So I was sad. But um he, he's just awesome. So having a, a puppy, um, it's a, a lot of work, but, uh, but it's awesome. He's adorable and worth, uh, worth it for sure. Awesome. What, uh, are you mobile app or in person? On the Chipotle? Uh, I'm, I'm an in-person guy. I've, I've, I've yeah. never used the mobile app, but I think I might need to download it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, we got some more questions from, uh, from the audience here. This is uh, from the Couture family in Colorado Springs. Um, for all of you, this is a great question, actually. If you weren't elite hockey players, what would you be? <laughs> wow. I, I don't know. All right. All right. Uh, Charlie, we're going back to you. Start this round. Uh, I... <laughs> I honestly don't know. Um, when I went to school, I I didn't really know what I wanted to do, um, but I ended up going uh, towards uh, communications was a major that I thought was cool and um, specifically PR. Uh, and then 
you know, since I've been gone and left school, I'm kind of giving it a little thought when I go back, I, I do want to try and get my degree if I want to switch and, and try something else, but I'm still not sure. Um, but it is something I, I'm working on. Um, I don't know. My, my dad owns McAvoy plumbing and heating a family owned business. So, um, he works as hard as anyone I know. And, uh, I don't know, maybe, um, I'd be swinging the swinging wrenches, I guess, uh, if I, if I didn't make it in hockey going, going for the family business. Awesome. All right. Great. We, we would take you in the PR world too. No problem. If you want to go that route, Kendall, what, uh, what, what do you, what do you have to response to that question? Um, I would say I would love to be a gymnast. Um, not to, and then if I'm, I think my body type, my size is definitely more suitable as a, as a gymnast. I love the, I love gymnastics, uh, watching it at the Olympic games, I love Simone Biles. Um, so I think it would be pretty cool to sw uh, swing from some bars and, um, be flexible because those that know me know I can barely touch my toes. So it's something that's completely opposite of uh, what I, what I'm capable of. I'm working at it every day. I'm definitely working on my flexibility every day, but and that was something new for me during the pandemic too, was actually trying to increase my flexibility and, you know, spending a lot of time in the basement, um, doing things like that. But, um, outside of athletics, um, I think I would love to be a doctor of some sort. Um, I love helping people. I, I think it would be, um, you know, a tough job, but a fun job to do, to go to work every day, to try and help someone get better. Um, so I think that would be my, my other, um, if I wasn't playing hockey. Dr. Coin, it has a ring to it, I must say. <laughs> Dr. Coin Schofield, yeah. Uh, what, what about the gymnastics bit? Did, were you in gymnastics as a kid ever? Never. Never. Yeah. I wish. Yeah. But my parents, you know, we were spending too much time at the rink with four of us. So I can't complain. I was, I was playing many sports as a kid. I, kid. I wasn't just doing hockey. That's what I would encourage all kids. If you can play many sports, I was doing a lot, but uh, gymnastics never made the cut for my family. Okay. That's all right. Um, Jack, you weren't an elite hockey player. What would you be doing right now? Is this like what I'd want to be doing? Yeah. Um, I'd want to be a country music singer. I'd want to be a pro golfer. Um, I don't know. I think being like a just a surfer dude in California is not a bad life too. Just hanging out and surfing and going to the beaches. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of good lives yeah. that I think would be fun. So I don't know. A professional surfer, I guess you can make a living. Just being a surfer dude, you probably have to do something. Yeah, um, but yeah, those are three cool lifestyles, I think. Who's your country music go-to? I like Morgan Wallen a lot. He's pretty good. Uh, Dirk Bentley's like my one in doubt. Turn him on. Gotcha. All right, Hillary, what, uh, you weren't an elite hockey player. What would you be wanting to be doing? Um, probably for athletics, um, probably in the WNBA or – um on the lpga tour that'd be pretty cool i love tennis um my mom's huge into tennis growing up so we always played tennis and a bunch of other sports and um yeah but outside of athletics i uh, did my undergrad at wisconsin uh history major to kind of set up for law school and i never really made it that far so <laughs> Okay. I uh, probably would want to be a lawyer um, to some extent. I think um, just, you know, social policy and, and um, having an impact in people's lives is something that's, you know, in, in our marrow and um, to be able to do that through law would be interesting. So are you, are you getting ready to watch the French Open? Do you watch any of the U.S. Open? <sighs> yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's, um, uh, you know, I've, I moved and stuff, so I'm just setting up TV and, and things now, but yeah, it's, um, it's, I mean, sports are on all the time on, on my TV. It doesn't really matter when, and obviously playoffs are extremely special, and that's when the real competitors come out, and um, I really appreciate them. Well, we, uh, we'd we be remiss. We, we've got we've to get in something about gold medal talk here, and I, I brought along a little show and tell because this is one of my favorite pieces from 2018 in front of the New York Post when our women's team won gold, and uh, they went to the New York Post in New York on a post-Olympic media tour. It was one of the stops. And I seem to recall 
you guys climbing on the hood of a uh, New York City cab and crowding in a car and around it and taking a picture. That was a lot of fun. But let's let's uh, cycle back to the games and that gold medal, scintillating gold medal game. Hillary, um, you know, 20 years before you talked about Cammy Granado before helped the U.S. win the gold medal in the first time the women's hockey was ever uh, conducted in the Olympics. And then there have been a lot of close calls along the way. And then we get to 2018, another just epic game between the U.S. and Canada. Rewind and share with us what that moment was like uh, when the game was over and then any reflection you've had uh, in the uh, couple years uh, afterward. Man, I thought you were going to ask me to rewind the game. I'm like, fish, I don't even remember the game. Um, no, I mean, it's it's a magical moment, right? I, I know that's really cliche to say, but you dream, like, as a kid to, like, have that gold medal placed around your neck, and that's the, the highest honor um, for us and uh, any, you know, Olympic athlete. And, um, yeah, it, it was literally a dream come true. And to, to come so close for so many years and, and have those heartbreaks um, and Canada continue to have our number at the games, but then have success at Worlds, um, it just, it felt like everything came full circle. And obviously that group of, of women is just an incredible group and being able to celebrate the journey afterwards and share that with all of our fans who never lost, lost a, a beat with us was, um, was incredible. So if I could do it over again, I would, and hopefully we can. Um, but yeah, I think uh, there's some dents left in someone's uh, cab in New York. So a little too heavy for the top there, but yeah, it's uh, it was a dream come true for sure. Kendall, so the, the, uh, the clock ticked down on regulation, went to overtime, clock ticked down in a 20 minute overtime. And you know, what, what's your, 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 we're going through this shootout and you know, what's going through your mind on the bench? And then, uh, you know, take us through those last couple of shots, the one from Jocelyn and then the save by Rooney at the other end and kind of what you were thinking as that was all going on. Yeah, once uh, Jocelyn's oops, I did it again, goal went in. And it was just absolutely epic. You're like, there's no way they're going to grab grab one after this. Like that goal was just way too nice. The momentum is has shifted to our side. And then you look at Rooney and she has a smile on her face from ear to ear, like the game's already over. And you're like, all right, well, she's, you know, she's ready to go. She's confident. I mean, she, I think was only a few months old the last time that the U S won a gold medal in 98. Um, and you could just see, you know, as, as Billie Jean King always says, pressure is a privilege. You look down and you, there's the privilege right there. And Maddie Rooney's face, she's like, I got this. And so I think as soon as Jocelyn scored came down, came down for some high fives and, um, at Megan Augusta went out for Canada. You know, I just, I, I had a feeling it was, it was over. Um, just, you can just sense it uh, on our bench and looking at Rooney on the other end. And, and then that little scoop at the end, I, yeah. my heart was still dropping. I was like, wait, it's still moving. The puck is still moving. Um, get over the goal line. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but again, Maddie was, was unbelievable. Um, all tournament long and, and Jocelyn's goal was unbelievable. Cool. Um, you know, as well as Amanda Kessels and, and Gigi Marvin's uh, throughout, you know, the shootout. But uh, yeah, it was, it was insane. It's like that dog pile that you, you know, you relive in your street as a kid and it goes by so fast and you work so hard for that, you know, those 30 seconds on the ice. I know we've all had moments, whether it's been with USA hockey, whether it's the world championships, world juniors uh, with the NTDP program, you know, we've, you know, we've, we've jumped into dog piles with the red, white, and blue over and over again, but that one was super special. And uh, I wish it didn't go by so fast. So we're gonna have to work hard to earn it again. And hopefully all four of us can be in uh, Beijing in 2022. That'd be pretty cool. Like the sound of that. Or five of us, you two fish. Okay. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, appreciate that. Um, that was, that was fun. I, yeah, just, you're exactly right. Kendall. I'd hope uh, to see all four of you on the Olympic stage here come Beijing. Um, gold medals, another magic gold medal moment, Charlie, you were part of, uh, the world juniors in 2017 in Canada. Just again, you talk about epic battles and, and uh, your team winning in the semifinal and the shootout against Russia. And then uh, that gold medal game against Canada on Canadian soil down by two goals twice in the game goes to overtime and a shootout and, and uh, share, share with us kind of just what, what that whole experience was like the last two games and, and winning that top prize on Canadian soil. Oh man, I think 
both those games took a couple of years off my life from the stress of it. Uh, yeah, it was just an incredible journey. I mean, we had such a close team. It was so neat because it was so many of our guys from the program. Um, so we're in Ann Arbor for two years together, growing, just developing every day, pushing each other. And then we all go off to, you know, our respective paths, whether it was junior hockey or, or college. And then, you know, we all met up two years later, um, you know, to, to win that tournament. And it was something that we all kind of had circled for a while that that was going to be our team or our 1997 team. And um, with the help of, you know, some other really special talents and, uh, and the best of that 1998 class, we were able to, to get it done. But I think the coolest thing about it was, I don't, I don't know if it'll ever happen again, that you win two shootouts in the, in the semis in the final and then um, also beating uh, Russia and Canada twice in the same tournament. Um, it's incredibly hard to, to beat a team twice in the same tournament and our group was able to do it. Yeah. That, uh, fun, fun moments. You've all been part of uh, U S teams on the international stage. And I know there's a long way to go uh, and we'll see you all again. And uh, fun moments. I want to, I want to just get a quick question and we'll get back to your uh, audience questions here in just a second, but, um, the NHL, the rule for shooting the puck out of play from your defensive zone over the boards is a penalty. Two minute minor. I think everyone knows that. Um, what would you, what would you all think if the rule do you, first of all, do you like the rule? And second, what would you think about the thought of just making a, a face off in your defensive zone and you can't change players much like, uh, the, the icing rule is. Husey, any thoughts on that? Do you like the rule as it is? Do you care? Would you like to see it modified? I'm gonna be honest. I didn't. I didn't listen to that question. I was watching Pavelski score. Oh, Pavelski score two Pavelski nothing. All right, score. thanks for the update. You're ahead. I'm so far behind. I, four on that. <laughs> <laughs> I like pointed so early on there, and I I feel like I'm the only one watching the game. Yeah. Well, I I don't know. I, I didn't hear the question. What was the question? The question is a two minute minor penalty for shooting the puck out of play in your defensive zone. Do you? Do you like the rule and, or would, what would you think about the rule being changed where it's just a face off in your defensive zone and you can't change players like icing? Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm not losing sleep over that rule. It's not something like, <laughs> all right. I mean, I don't it's know. A fair it's answer. Like, it seems like, a, like that would be, that would make sense if they did take that, take it out. Um, I also like going on the power play at times because <laughs> someone decides to flip it over the glass too. I'm sure Charlie doesn't like that as much on the back end with that, uh, that, that happening. But yeah, I mean, I'm, it's not something I really would not like to see or would like to see. Charlie, you have any opinion on that? No, I mean, I, I understand the premise behind the rule. Like if you're just gassed and you're just like, I'm going to get a whistle and change. You just, Charlie, you see that just one? Skyrocket. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, but just two scored. One. Yeah. No, oh, I, sure. I think it's a, a fair it's a fair rule. Good rule. All right, good. 2-1, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure you're all following along with the game on uh, those of you joining us tonight. But uh, all right, here we, here we go. I'm getting back to the uh, questions. Here's a question from Sydney in Columbus. Have you ever bought your goalies dinner for a great performance? Who wants to, who wants to take a stab at that one? Uh, I haven't, no. I would bought my goalie dinner this year just because he's a pretty good guy and he's a beauty. Bought him dinner a few times, but other than that, not really. No, anybody else on that one? We had a, a rule if you hit the goalie in warm-ups, you have to buy um, – a case of beer but is that right well, obviously over 21 so <laughs> yeah oh, that's a good one all right well, when, you, when you when you make as much money as tuca makes you buy dinner that's <laughs> tukes picks up the check okay all right good answer um let's uh let's get to another question here um this one is uh, from Julia, Julia, I think I'm saying that right, in Brazil, uh, for Kendall and Hillary. I'm from Brazil and recent, recently started getting into hockey and saw a lot of girls here in Brazil watch the sport, even though it's 
not a popular sport here. Do you think that girls are getting a, a bigger spot in sports now overall? What do you guys, you think uh, there's more opportunities for girls today now in sports? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, in, in the U.S. in specific, you know, a lot of us are benefactors, if not second, first generation of uh, Title IX and, and that whole fight. Um, but to have sports more accessible to women, to have other opportunities, to have equal opportunities for women is, is clearly important, um, not just only in sport, but in other industries. But um, there's some magical things that can happen through sport, and you never know where in a uh, sport's going to take you. I know when Kendall and I probably, Kendall could probably speak to this, but when we signed up, we didn't think we'd, you know, meet amazing people and travel around the world. It was just something fun that we did, but um, you know, it's awesome to see that we have fans in Brazil. And um, I think that's, what's, what's great about, you know, the, the times is we're so connected with social media and um, sports are now more accessible than ever before. And I hope uh, we can continue that trend. Yeah. Just to piggyback off what Hillary said too, it's just, the incredible opportunities that come through sport. It's not the wins and losses, the X's and O's. Obviously, as elite athletes, all of that is so important to us. But when we, when we look back on our careers, it's the experiences we had, the, the, the ability to go to college and get an education, and then play hockey as well, um, You know, play for Team USA, go to a handful of Olympic games, all these things that, um, you know, being a part of USA Hockey and Team USA, we, you know, never imagined when I was three years old and I put on my first pair of skates. So um, for, for Julia in, in Brazil, I would say continue to play the game, love the game and, and share the game with others. You know, we need to continue to grow the game of hockey worldwide um, and, and make sure the hockey is, is known that it, it is for everyone and we need to continue to share the game with everybody. So uh, it's exciting to hear, um, you know, and keep loving the game. And, and I hope you, get to watch the U S women's national team at some point here when we get back to uh, games and, and competitions. Well, thanks to everyone uh, watching tonight for, for all your questions. Sorry, we couldn't get to all of them tonight, but uh, we appreciate you sharing part of your Friday night with us here. The first period, I'm sure, as you all know, is completed and uh, the stars laid the lightning two to one. Uh, our thanks to Chipotle for bringing us all together tonight. Thanks certainly to Kendall, Jack, Hillary, and Charlie for being with us. Enjoy the rest of the game and your weekend. And with that, good night, everyone.